गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग सपना गुड मॉर्निंग संजय दीपा गुड मॉर्निंग लेट एवरी वन ज्वाइन इन फ्रेंड्स नाउ द फर्स्ट सेशन विल कंप्लीट ऑफ ऑल द पेंटिंग एरिया लेट मी ओपन द चैट इन माई फोन ऑल्सो of the study material so first we will complete off with the entire study material after that is over we will start with the case study digest that will be the only thing pending for us to do then all right so first i'll just do one thing i'll open this chapter we had a problem that was pending over here has everyone joined in good morning sudha all right here we had one illustration number 1 which was pending yes this question even though is there in strategic analysis its base is coming from standard costing that is the reason i didn't cover this problem on the other day i'll give you 2 minutes time can you read through this problem and understand this question after which we will do it together All right, I can see the chat now. Uh, Dashna, this is in strategic analysis. Strategic analysis of operating income. Yes, this actually is a problem on standard costing, Darshana. But it's come in this chapter of strategic analysis. let's do it together friends okay here they have given revenue and they have used the new terminology revenue and cost effect on growth component revenue and cost effect on price recovery the moment you see these words you get a bit confused and here they have used productivity i'll tell you in simple terms under sales we have learned mainly three variances what are the three variances that we have learned top will be sales variance inside that what will you have you will have price variance and you have volume variance right price recovery component is nothing but price variance growth component is nothing but volume variance all right i'll prove it to you now down they have told why limited sold 4 lakh boxes and 4 lakh 20000 boxes so This is four lakh boxes. This one is four lakh twenty thousand boxes. So I'll just write over here. <coughs> Working note one. 
sales variance all right in that i'll write down bq then i will write bp aq ap bq the budgeted quantity is told in the question as 4 lakh boxes bp now we can find out because the total sale value is how much 40 lakh correct so i'll just put it over here as 40 lakh divided by 4 lakh boxes so do you get the answer as 10 rupees per box okay aq is turning out to be given as 4 lakh 20000 and the total sale value is said to be 46 lakh 20000 tell me friends what is the answer you get over here do you get the answer as 11 rupees over here now can you go and find out all the variances that we already know please do it i'll get some water and come back Tell me all the sales variants, okay? Okay, so do you get the answer as six six lakh favorable? All right, and what do you get inside that? do you get 4.2 lakh favorable is it 6.2 all right <coughs> 6.2 lakh favorable inside that how much is it 4 lakh 20000 favorable is it so the other one would turn out to be how much it will be 2 lakh favorable am i right let's just check the question look at this do you get the same answer over here also <clears throat> so these are nothing but the price variance and the volume variance just that they are using some different terminology 
and this one is nothing but volume variance. So can you write down this in your books now? Everybody clear with this? All right. Fine, friend. Same way, when you look at the cost variance, I'll write down the next working note now. Now you understand the logic of what we are doing. Next, I'll write down analysis of cost variance. So when you talk about the cost variance, here it was 29 lakh 20, other one is 31 lakh. 31 lakh 78,000, right? You get a difference of 2 lakh 58,000. I'll write down the overall, it is 2 lakh 58,000. Adverse. Ideally, we do it using two things. One is price and the other one is usage. Price they have directly given <coughs> as 2 lakh 56,000. Adverse. All right. Usage, they have broken up into two parts. One, they are calling it as the growth component. Now, how they have worked out this, it's not clear in the question. One is due to growth component and the other one is due to productivity component. So, it might be productivity component might be the mix variance and the growth component might be the yield variance. All right, it will be easier for us to remember it that way. I'll call this as the mix, better productivity, yield, which will be the growth. So that is how you get the total usage and the overall variance tallies. So here I'll put 60,000 adverse. That is growth component. 58,000 favorable. Okay, Can you draw this chart in your books now? Are you all done writing this? All right. Same way, I can now go and write down profit variance. 10 lakh AD has become 14 lakh 42,000. So you get the total as 3 lakh 62,000 favorable. This is due to three reasons. One, due to price. Other one they are saying is due to growth. And the last one they are saying is due to productivity. Okay. How much is coming due to price? 1,64,000. Profit went up by 1,64,000 due to price. It went up by 1,40,000 due to growth. And it went up by 58,000 due to productivity. All right. Can you please write down this in your books, friends?
Are you all done writing this? Let everyone finish. All right, friends. Now, <coughs> down they have told during 2021, the market for cardboard boxes grew by how much percentage? 3 percentage. Analysis of market time. Okay. So now listen. Okay. 2020 sales is turning out to be how much? 4 lakh. Okay, market growth they are saying is turning out to be how much friends? 3%. Am I right? So tell me how much is the market growth in units that we get over here? Do I get the answer as 4 lakh into 3%? That is equal to how much? 12,000 units. Please write down this in your books. Ashwini is having some login problem today. Let me check. The app was getting uploaded. Okay. She is logged in. She just messaged she is logged in. Just confirm. All right. Friends, are you all done writing this? Can I go to the next part? All right. So friends, now what has happened is from 4 lakh, it has gone up to 4 lakh 20 thousand. Correct? I just write down the next one as size and share variance. So now I'll write down total increase in the volume. This is from 4 lakh, it goes up to 4 lakh 20,000. Though it's going up by how many boxes? It's going up by 20,000 boxes. Out of the 20,000 boxes, we found out that 12,000 is due to market size. That means the balancing figure which is 8,000 will be due to what? It will be due to market share. Draw this chart in your books now. All right, friends, everybody is done writing this. Fine. So once you are done with this, I'll just come down. They are asking, compute how much of change in the profit is due to market size, is due to productivity, and is due to product differentiation. Interesting question. So they basically, we have already got the profit variance in price, growth, productivity. 
But what they want is, I'll just write down over here the next working node. Segregation of profit variance. Okay. So here they would say 3 lakh. What is the total variance? 3 lakh 62,000 favorable is a total variance, right? They want this variance in three parts. What are the three parts they have told over here? <coughs> Due to market size. That is the first one. What is the second one they have told? Productivity. And what is the last thing they have told over here? Product differentiation. They have used some different terminologies, friend. Productivity, I believe, is already there in the question. Productivity is already here. How much is the productivity? 58,000 favorable. So, I will put up that first. Remaining two, we have to find out. Can you draw this chart in your books now? <coughs> Are you all done writing this, friends? Okay. Now we have to just go and find out the market size part. So everybody interact with me. Okay, market size variance comes under what part? Does it come under price variance or does it come under volume variance? Market size, does it come under volume variance or does it come under price variance? It comes under volume. So can I say this 1,40,000 is the one under which it will be coming? Am I right? Correct. So what I'll do is, I'll just write down the next working note heading okay analysis of market size impact market size impact on on what variance on uh, on the profits okay so now tell me how much is the profit due to volume variance 1 lakh 40 thousand so profit due to Volume is equal to one lakh forty thousand. All right. So this one lakh forty thousand is what we have to now break it into market size and market share. So we earlier found out that twelve thousand units is due to market size. Eight thousand was due to market share. Am I right? So can I not do one lakh forty thousand into twelve thousand divided by twenty thousand? What is the twenty? The sum total. So what's the answer you get over here? Do I get the answer as 84,000 favorable? Am I right? Okay. And how much will this turn out to be? 1,40,000 into 8,000 divided by 20,000 will be 56,000 favorable. All right. So friends, this 84,000 is due to what now? This is due to size. All right. They have asked for three categorization, size, productivity and product differentiation. So what I believe is product differentiation will be the balancing figure. Whatever doesn't come in market size or whatever doesn't come in productivity will come where it will come in product differentiation. So here have I got the market size as 84,000? Hence, friends, please tell me how much will be the product differentiation. Three lakh minus eighty-four thousand minus fifty-eight thousand. Do I get the answer over here as two lakh twenty thousand? Okay. 
this 2 lakh 20 thousand actually will have two breakups one is this 56 thousand that we found out what is this 56 thousand that is market share apart from that there must be this 58,000, sorry, this 1,64,000 of price we have not considered, right? 1,64,000 is what? Price. So if you add up 1,64,000 plus 56,000, you will get the correct total as 2,20,000. Are you clear now? Draw this in your books. Yes, yes, Ashwin. Are you all done? Please write down this now. Are you all done writing this? Let everyone finish doing this. Are you all done with this? All right. So friends, I'll just show you the final solution. Look, we have told operating income, market size 84,000, productivity 58,000, product differentiation 2,20,000.
Just copy down this table and our answer is over. That's why I didn't do this earlier. This is a little tricky one which can be done only after we do standard costing reconciliation. <coughs> Are you all done writing this? I believe you are still writing. Let them finish. All right, friends, I believe everybody is done writing this. Perfect. So, friends, we are done with this problem. And uh, technically, we are done with the entire problems of this chapter of the study material, except for one question, rank cluster algorithm. That question is also there in the case study digest. So, we'll do that along with the case study digest problem. So, once we do that, you will become strong in rank cluster algorithm also. All right. What is left for me to complete in the study material is some of the case studies. So once we are done with that, we can say that we are 100% through the entire study material. Let it be theory, let it be problems or let it be the case studies. So I'll open up the case studies now friends and we'll discuss and finish it off. All right. Uh, I believe I've shared the Google Drive with all of you, right? It is there in the WhatsApp group also as the uh, subject heading or whatever it is there. Okay, this word document, you have to just keep it. It's a summary checklist of all the case studies. All right. In your textbook from 2017 to 2022, case studies have been added in multiple phases. This is phase one case studies that I'm going to cover over here. All right. After this, these are phase two case studies, which we will discuss now. All right. Then there are some additional case studies which are there in the textbooks or which are there in the RTPs or somewhere. Phase 3, the last phase, hold on. Phase 1, phase 2, this is phase 3. Phase 3. And this one is phase 4. That is the case study digest. Alright. Phase 1, these 9 case studies is what we covered from the original uh, I'll just take that study material case studies. I shared with you a document like this one. Right? These short notes were the first one that I originally made when it was required for all of you. And this is what we covered in the earlier class. Am I right? We'll just revise this and check if everything is covered or not covered. Okay. The first case, Sun Electronics. Do you remember uh, we have discussed this in the class? This is already done, right? Sun Electronics, we had a centralized warehouse, 30 stores were there, etc, etc. It's already covered. This is case study number 2. Zen Mobile Manufacturing, faulty phone. 3 to 4 batches sent per day. And you know, we were sending it back. 
we have already covered this one also in casein caustic correct what about this one car you know balance scorecard they had a prp performance related payment are you able to recall friend we have done this we have drawn the similar car photo also in class that you know they were doing it on prp maximum production so lot of faulty products were coming some gearbox were having problem uh, so after that they told they will implement balance scorecard financial perspective uh, what was the other one customer perspective internal growth perspective internal perspective and learning and growth and this we did along with balance scorecard correct right? after that we learned about this performance prism also friends we learned about performance prism also i told that despite implementing balance scorecard they were having a high turnover ratio so investors should be happy customers should be happy supplier so i made you write this note in your books stakeholder satisfaction that is the crux theory of performance prism <clears throat> after that we learned about tpm do you remember this case study this company was not having any maintenance schedule so they started crashing plan broke down 20% product also failed and then we learned tpm total productive maintenance where we learned about breakdown maintenance preventive maintenance corrective maintenance etc etc am i right yes after this ethical and non financial consideration this also if i am not wrong we have covered okay they entered into manufacturing of copper npv was 200 crore life 20 years initial cost 500 crore etc <coughs> then i told you they were paying 15% less wages on contractual basis no pf esi bribe they paid harmful waste treatment so finally we told that we should not only look at the financial we should also consider non financial considerations and ethics also correct this part also we have done i think this question uh, we did this problem also after we did chapter number 1 we covered this sap r3 they are doing just in time and the customer is there it's a fast moving product etc etc we have done this also right then we did the shandar bangle do you remember doing this case study i showed you a video of how the bangle industry is working yeah that part is also covered after this there was a case study on transfer pricing do you remember consultant customer support training i gave you all this chart 200 150 and then the budgeted cost was 14800 actual went up with that the part 1 case studies get over all right so if i look over here supply chain management transfer pricing case a balance scorecard performance prism tpm ethical value chain environmental accounting first nine case studies are completed now we go to the second part of the case study all right here we have some which are not covered value chain is in notebook not yet covered porter's value chain not yet covered porter's five forces and divisional transfer pricing done in chapter 1 i don't remember doing this we'll check this i don't think we have done this business excellence model friends we have done i have given a youtube link also over here so whenever you get doubt just copy the youtube link i believe we have done this it's already shared darshna friends i believe we have covered this case study business excellence on apparel sector have i covered or have i not covered i'll just play this again friends i don't remember if i have covered this okay i'll just play this again just go through this covered raj you sure okay all right so friends here we learned i'll just pause this and just show you the ppt 
Ah, exactly. I've covered this. There are two parts of a good business: sustaining and the growth. Okay. So the customers should be happy, etc. So we did a. There is a model called as EFQM, and this is a major theory. You need to have five enablers. Okay, that is leadership, clear cut strategy, people, resource, and extremely good process. These are the five enablers that are required, right? And then there are some two results also. What they have told, if I'm not wrong, four results are the customers happy, people happy, environment happy, and is the business making money? Friends, once you get the crux of every case study, solving in the exam becomes easy because they'll give you an entire case. You need to just write down the facts of the case. Then you have to write down the theory. These two parts you can easily do. Third part is where all this application is required. So once you know the crux of the case, it becomes easy. And I have compressed all the case studies in such a manner that per case study it will take you maximum five minutes. Others will spend thirty minutes. That twenty-five minutes will be a huge leading advantage, friends. All right. So I believe we are done with this part also. This. This is done. YouTube links are all done. The building block model we have done. Restaurant business. Then we had all the financial, customer result, etc. It is there in the Google Drive link. Triple bottom line also we have done. Am I right? I think I gave you a question where there were some backward areas, etc., etc. Triple bottom line also it is done. Deepa, I'll come back to you. I'll just show you first whatever is covered, what is not covered. <coughs> Friends, this is done TBL reporting. You know they had some paper mill and they were doing from downgraded areas, etc., etc. Hold on, hold on. Can you hear me? One moment. Can you hear me? Okay, then wait one moment. One moment. One moment. One moment. Am I visible now? By mistake, I closed it. Friends, that's what happened. Sorry. All right. So we are done with the business excellence model, all right. I think we have done with triple bottom line also. TBL reporting we have done. I hope you remember. We had three things. One was three P's: people, profit, planet. Everybody clear with that? All right. So we are done with this part also. Okay. Now, six sigma. We have notebook uh, case studies. We haven't covered. We'll come to that. Building block model done, triple bottom line done. Performance measurement in not profit sector we have done. Do you remember that silver sands example? Economy, efficiency, effectiveness. There was a beach in Goa. Somebody was trying to uh, clean that beach, so we had to look at that part, right? Okay. This one we have not done. We will do it now. Wings International is something similar to Kingfisher Airlines. We will do this now. Beyond budgeting resorts we have done. They had a resort. They were trying to create a top-down approach budget. Then we told top-down is not good. You have to go for bottom-up. Am I right? The supply chain we haven't done. We'll do this. Building block we have done. TBL we have done. Porter's chain versus value shop model. There's a video on that. Maybe I'll check that. So there are a few videos which are pending. Let's complete the video part first. Then we will do the notebook notebook case studies. With that, we'll be done with entire case studies of the textbook. We can then go to case study digest. Everybody clear? Okay. Wait. Before that, Deepa, you asked a problem: how to study for case studies? <clears throat> In the exam, <coughs> case study will come for how many marks? 
you have to go by four steps what is the first step facts of the case this facts might fetch you maybe three marks not more than that after that you are supposed to write down the theory this is where your main marks will come after theory you have to go for application of theory this will again carry marks okay this will also carry suppose if this is carrying around 10 marks or 5 marks this one will carry 10 marks and then finally you will have conclusion which will be carrying around 2 marks so deepa i'll give you a very simple scenario okay let's take a question paper and check All right. Now look at this case study. AB electron is well established. Air conditioner, TQM, blah blah blah. So the moment you read this, what are you supposed to do? Write down the facts of the case. Management of AB has pointed out last year sales is decreasing. Customer not showing interest. Blah blah blah. To resolve this problem, they have decided to decrease the selling price. But decreasing does not affect much. Company has a good name. Blah 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 blah. All the facts you write down. after you write down as per latest technology etc etc you come down okay they are asking you one by one some question for example the first one is as per strategic position analysis where does the company stand so are they having a low cost advantage or differentiation advantage that theory is supposed to come over here demonstrate the applicability of 6c so friends here what will you do you will write down all the 6c point by point you will write down give your recommendation for implementation of six sigma here what will you write down dummy dumma dv haven't you learned all these things currently at which phase of the life cycle is are you following so introduction growth maturity decline change is the law of the world this is just a argumentative theory you can write whatever you want over here so friends first you put the facts of the case then you if you know the theory only you can write down this and for that i have covered all the theory i have given the ppt for all the theory apart from the ppt what i have given you what reading to the textbook is required one reading but exam 95% theory is coming from the ppt what i have already shared with all of you those ppt are short notes so once you know the short note you can elaborate using blah 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 that blah 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 technique you have learned in your college in your school and everywhere am i right so that way you can always elaborate but the crux will always come in your examination are you all clear with that part then you have to go and make an application and then solution so friends whatever case studies we are studying in class is only to give you practice that similar case study might come in the exam or something else might come if similar case study comes you will be more confident otherwise you have to analyze on your own and write down that is the only way out point by revati you can write down everything point by para wise is not required deepa are you clear now all right all right okay so let's go and complete all the video driven case studies first this is done this is done porter chain is not done let us do this first value shop model wait 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 it is not at all audible okay my industry is for to solar sector and how to improve to improve the quality of operation friends for this case let us take a sample name called as maxwood solar company this is a very very dominant company in the whole of the indian market they are with some of the best quality staff who are available in india so that they can provide the best quality services these staffs what they do is they give proposal in advance only after client approval they will go 
back to the work because they are providing expensive service. It is not practical for everyone to be in a position to afford that services. Now, they visit the customer, they install the entire system over there once the proposal is accepted and then they raise the invoice to the customer. Of late, because of the high prices, customers, even who are very happy with the services, are complaining that they are charging a huge price and they have to do something to reduce their services. Friends, that is the point when we try to implement a model what we call it as value chain analysis. Let's understand what is value chain analysis in a very very simple language. Friends, value chain analysis is basically a process in which we study the hundred different process of the company and what process of the company. What we do is we segregate this into two parts. One is called value added activity and the other one is called as non-value added activity. Friends, value added activity are those activities which are very essential for the company to go forward. Non-value added activity are those activities which do not result in any benefit to the company but the company is paying some money for this from their package. So friends, if we remove all the not value added activities from the process and we retain the value added activity, the benefit for the company will get will be amazingly high. This was actually done by one of the Amazon companies around 20, 30 years back, in which they used to provide free food to the customers. They did a homework on what are the eating habits of these customers, and they understood that out of 100 customers who come into the flight, 90 customers do not eat olives, which was given by the airline. So they took a decision that let us do one thing, let's stop giving olives because it's only benefiting 10% of the population and not benefiting the 90%. By just doing so, they saved almost $45,000 in one year. And friends, this is not a small amount, this is a huge amount. By just making one value chain positive change by removing a non-value added activity. For this value chain, the main most popular value chain analysis is what we call it as Porter's value chain analysis. Porter has created a mainly four step value chain analysis. One is called as the inbound logistics, second one is called as the process, third one is called as the outbound logistics, and the last one is called as up to sale service. I repeat, inbound logistics is called as top to sale service. Process is where you convert this raw material into finished goods. Outbound logistics means taking the raw material and delivering it to the customer. And the last step is called up to sale service. Once you deliver the product, if there are any drawbacks to the product, you can go and identify the thing. But friends, Porter's value chain can be learned in depth when we learn about manufacturing processes. Right now, we are talking about service sector. And friends, in service sector, you do not have inbound logistics, you don't have process, you do not have outbound logistics. That is when Porter's chain value analysis cannot be used. But in case you are into a service sector, the model that you should learn is called as the professional value chain analysis. In professional value chain analysis, all the process custom made to each service is learned separately, analyzed separately, categorized into value chain and non value added to remove the non value added activity, retain the value added activity. Like that, the benefit that your company will derive will be far higher and far more beneficial. I hope you are clear with the logic of value chain analysis and, and how this can be used. In your company, thank you. Friends, this is a case study on a company called as Solar. I'll repeat the case study now. Okay. So, friends, these are all the basic PPTs. You can always look at the video and you can learn it by making notes out of this. Okay. One minute. They're talking about a company called as Solar, very professionally managed company, but their price is very high. So, customers are not very happy. That is how they bring the value analysis. Value added non-value added, retain the value added, remove the non-value added. For this, Michael Porter's chain is having one value added uh, process, but that is only for goods. For service, they cannot use this. For service, they have to use something called as professional value chain. Friends, I have taught you the theory of professional value chain. Do you remember that? Or I'll give you the notes right away now. One moment. In the study material theory, we did chapter 1, introduction we did. 
this was the uh, i'm not sure if i covered this at that time if not can you write down the service value chain primary activities are different problem finding problem solving choosing among solutions execution and control and support activities are the same have you written down this node earlier you have done right i have taught you this so it is on this case that you have that video that is available everybody clear with this part now so we are done with the westwood solar also so when you study the case study friends study the crux okay maybe what you can do is you can make a summary with which you will be able to remember westwood solar i will do that and provide you now we can maybe write down westwood solar all right so when we speak about westwood solar in this company it is a highly efficient company but what is the major problem over here they are having high cost so in order to solve the high cost it is a service sector and so what is what, what is it that you will be using over here you will be using the service value chain once you get this much of crux this entire case study you can recall from your mind itself you really don't need anything else am i right so you can just you know put a solar company's photo if you want you can put a sun on the top okay and just put something where you know the sun rays are coming so that way you will remember this case study with the photo and here the people who are working are very very efficient people etc etc can you write down this in your books with this what picture oh god so sorry you will be able to recall the entire case study please write down friends Uh, Deepa, yes. Before starting that, you have to write down the facts. Only then you should go to the questions. Absolutely right. Are you all done drawing this? Can I go to the next case study now? Done. All right. So we are done with this case study also. Let's complete all the video-driven case studies. After which uh, we will go to the next one. All right. Next one is the competitive advantage. Okay. So the name of the case studies. competitive advantage i'll first give you an image then i will share the video with you you will get a better understanding everyone tell me friends what is this this is an aeroplane all right this is absolutely the real life case study of kingfisher airlines Kingfisher Airlines started with a bird flying shark. No, yeah, this is aeroplane. See here, there are clouds. Aeroplane is flying in the sky. Kingfisher Airlines, Vijay Malia started this with a bang. He made you know this so much advertisement, so much popularity. You know, brought all the best looking models as the air hostess for this flight. It got a very good pickup, but. there were lot of problems that he never foresee he thought that only air hostess can make an airline succeed 
he made the pricing also very high he started giving everyone infinite luggage space in flight luggage space is a very very uh, complicated thing friends you just cannot actually uh, take too much of luggage he gave that and only celebrities started traveling and the fare was very very high so that target audience was where what over here they were all the premium customers right initially it was doing well subsequently you know many other people came up into the market with a low cost airline one of them was indigo okay decan decan is the main company which actually air decan is the main company which started that concept and there is a movie on that friends amazing movie surya's movie i forgot the name must watch what a movie that is uh yes sura rai potru when you are free even before exam you can watch this a very very inspiring movie you will get all energized to study for another 3 hours friends i saw it in tamil with subtitles in english anshuman even i don't follow tamil but that movie is amazing a must watch these fellows came up with a low cost airline that is they started giving airlines for 3000 rupees ticket 2000 rupees ticket whereas kingfisher was providing the airline for maybe 20000 30000 etc now what happened people started moving to air decan only limited high profile people started going in kingfisher and even for kingfisher there were competitors like air india and many other big high profile companies all right gulf air was there etc etc the moment this came up vijay malia got shook up he saw the profits are coming down he wants to do something now to manage this so he tried converting kingfisher into a low cost airline but friends already his premium customers was all these high profile people suddenly you shifted to a low cost the high profile people who were coming they stopped coming because what they did was they removed the leg space uh, earlier they used to sit comfortably then the leg space started you know coming down he started hiring some cheaper air hostesses he started you know giving food with cost luggage space suddenly congested customers started getting confused what kind of airlines is this is it a premium airlines or is it a low cost airline they lost their complete market and they got absolutely out so here what they are saying is that when you are competing with some other company you should keep your target audience constant you should not just keep on shifting the audience like that and second thing there is something what we learned called as feedback feed forward this fellow went for feedback you know after the customer started reacting he started taking corrective actions he should have gone for what feed forward can you just draw this picture in your books in your understandable manner then i will play the video Kingfisher acquired Air Decan. Kingfisher Red, it became, is it? I need to check that part, Anshuman. <clears throat> then it started bleeding
Are you all done? I'll now play the video, friends. Now in this video, we will discuss about the difference between two terminology. One is feed back, the other one is feed forward. This video will help you to understand how feed forward can actually help to plan business in ahead and stop making much mistakes that many companies are actually doing. Let us take a very simple example of an airline industry this time. Let us say the name of this car of this company is Wings International. This company is there in business in the last three decades and they are doing pretty good. Their initial target customers was only the business segment and the premium segment, all the high profile people. They used to charge ticket costs like crazy and since the profile, high profile people were involved, they had no problems in paying that money. Because of this, they were also offering free baggage intervention. So they can carry as much of baggage as required. In fact, they also had a logo. Grab your bag, they fly free. Now, slowly, slowly, what happened? Many other airlines started coming into the business. And now there is some kind of a competition which started between these things. These new airlines, in order to penetrate the market, started giving prices at the best low cost and they started giving many last minute discounts. Which means normally if a ticket cost is 10,000 rupees, last minute the flight is not full. They were even giving it at a low price of 1,200 rupees also. So friends, suddenly when these competitors started flooding the market, Wings International started getting a little bit tense about what is going to happen. And hence, what Wings International started doing was they started started reducing the prices. Now, when they started reducing the prices, they couldn't provide the baggage and things that they were complaining earlier. So they started reducing all the baggage. Now, Premium customers who are long term clients of Wings International suddenly started getting confused because they had no identity as to whether they are targeting the premium clients or are they targeting the lower level clients. Customer became confused about the product offer. So now Wings International again got confused and what they started doing was they again changed the rates back to the earlier one and started increasing the price, started giving baggage free of cost. Right. All this mess up resulted in the fall of Wings Airlines because now the new customers are also confused, the confused, the old ones are also confused. Right. This one problem could have been solved by using feed forward methodology. Friends, there are two terminologies. One is called the feedback and the other one is called as feed forward. Feedback is I do something, I go wrong. Feedback, what I'm saying is that it is actually already done in the feedback. Feed forward means getting feedback in advance. How do you get feedback in advance? You have to do some in depth planning. We have to understand the human psychology. Maybe we can do a sample by speaking to a few customers. But without feed forward, if we implement something, wait for a span of time, then the customer give us negative feedback. Then we try fixing it, it can result in a collapse of the industry. So, friends, in order to make sure that feed forward works properly, do good planning, put all the input variables properly in place. If the inputs are right, the output will be correct. The inputs will be human behavior. If I change the price like this, what will happen to the industry customer? If I change the price like this, will it actually generate more sales, etc. etc. So, friends, if a company has to grow in today's generation, the diet changing world rather than waiting for feedback we should start with feed forward i hope this video is clear to all of you friends thank you so much there is an unnecessary duration that is kept over there all right i hope you are clear with this uh, video now everyone of wings international like with every case study, make a crux, make an image. That image should be there in your mind. Looking at that image, you will be able to recall the entire case study. Everybody clear, friends? So, we'll go to the next part now. Okay, we are done with this. Now, there is a supply chain memorable travels. Let's do this 
video also. I think this is the last video that is to be covered. Then the case studies are in the notebook that we need to discuss and solve it. There's a video on how to attack case studies in exam also. Deepa, you can definitely go through this. I'll just put the video again. In the supply chain, the main thing is a diagram. Yes, this diagram is what you're supposed to, you know, just copy down. So it's basically a tour company. This tour company is not able to manage everything. They are getting, you know, a lot of calls from the people and they are getting flight getting cancelled or room booking getting cancelled getting cold food etc so how to solve this thing first create a supply chain for a tour operator so this is the tour operator where you have a customer he goes to a tour operator tour operator will help you to book a transport that will take you to the resort wherever suppose you have to go to goa 
it will take you to goa there you book a room and then there will be a tour guide can you draw this diagram in your books this diagram is enough to recall this entire case study I believe you are done writing this. All right, friends. So once you create this proper this thing, then you can create a documented process, written supply chain, contracts with each and every tool operator. If you do this properly. hire the right people definitely your business will be growing to the next level that is what they are trying to intend over here so are you all clear with this concept of supply chain management also friends so when you look at the index we have done with all the case studies pertaining to the videos that i have taken there are a few for which videos are not taken that we will cover it after the break i think one is the first one second one third one there are three videos fourth one we have covered silver sands we have covered there are three and these videos we have done we have done it separately in the class uh, i will show you that nutty bites if you are not covered we'll cover it now fresh bazaar also is there for that they have videos also we'll take care we'll discuss everything and we'll complete the entire 32 case studies which is there in your textbook all right friends so let's take a break now after the break we'll continue with the next session thank you